here we will talk about simple stress and strain first let's define what stress means suppose we have a material and it is subjected to a force f this is our external force when an external force act on this object then a resisting force is set up within the component so these are resisting force which act this side so the internal resistance force per unit area acting on material is called stress. So these internal forces divided by area is known as stress. And it is having unit as Newton per meter square. Now we will classify stress. So we classify stress as simple or direct stress, indirect stress or combined stress. And in simple and direct stress, we have three classification. First is tension, which we can say tensile force. Second one is compression or compressive force. And third one is shear. When we talk about indirect stress, then we have two categories. One is our bending. And second classification is torsion. Now we will understand direct stress. If a force acts on an object directly, that is if force acts normal to the cross sectional area, then that force is known as direct force and that force will develop a stress which will be direct stress. So let's understand this with an example. So you can observe in this image that force is applied directly to this surface. If you will see this cross section, then this cross section is this and force is acting perpendicular to it. So this force will develop a stress which is which is direct stress. So we will define direct stress as ratio of force to area. Now you can observe here the tendency of this force is to elongate this surface. So tendency of this force is to elongate this surface. So this force is known as tension. And if you will observe this force then this is compressing this object means it will shorten the object. So this object force is known as compressive force that is compression. Now we will talk about third case which is called shear. Suppose this is our surface and if force acts parallel to the cross section area then these force will develop a stress which is known as shear stress. And the force which acts parallel to surface is known as shear force and they will develop shear stress. So we can define shear stress as shear force per unit area. So we use this symbol tau and this is our force that is shear force and this is area of cross section that is this cross section where shear force is acting. Strain is defined as ratio of change in length to initial length. So let's see what this means. This is our surface in which a force F is applied. This is length and suppose T is our width. So if we apply this force, so this force will elongate the surface. It will elongate the surface, but it will decrease this T that is our width. So it will look like so del L is our increase in length. So this is del L and this is our decreased width that is del T. Both side here also del T. So now we will define two types of strain. One is linear strain that is this side strain and one is lateral strain that is this reduced cross section as we define strain as change in length by initial length. So both side length is changing that is here it is increasing and here it is decreasing. So we define linear strain as ratio of change in length by initial length. So this is our linear strain. We can directly put this value in it. That is our initial length is L and change in length is del L plus del L. Now we will define lateral strain. So similarly, we can say it is change in lateral length to initial lateral length that is ratio of change in lateral length to initial lateral length that is del t. So this is how we define strain. Now we define mathematically strain as ratio of change in length to initial length. So this is our change in length and 
this is our original length now we will define shear strain so this is our object and this is our shear force that is force which is acting tangentially to our surface now when this force act to this surface then this layer will slide forward so it will look like so it look like this that is after application of force this upper surface has slided so I have combined the figure so del L is our displaced length of the sides and phi is our angle strain angle so we define shear strain as phi so phi is our shear strain so we write tan phi as del L by L so L is our this length and del L is this del L is this length as shown so we write shear strain as del L by L for as we know for small angle tan phi is equal to phi so this is our shear strain now we will define poison ratio it is defined as ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain and it is denoted by symbol mu or 1 by m so we write it mathematically as negative of lateral strain to longitudinal strain as ratio cannot be negative so lateral strain and longitudinal strain should be of opposite sign just remember the figure which we have shown you in strain so i will use same figure for finding out value of poison ratio so this is our figure here del t show our lateral side and del l is our longitudinal side so we will write poison ratio as ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain so expression is so this is our lateral strain that is this strain and this is our longitudinal strain that is this strain so here we have two del l so we have added this to get two del l and here also we have two del t so we have added this added this to get this so you can also check that mu should be positive for making this positive value of this should be negative so we will put negative value because here cross section is decreasing this side and length is increasing so poison ratio is a positive quantity now we will define volumetric strain so it is ratio of change in volume to initial volume so this is how we write volumetric strain change in volume by initial volume